let's try to understand this uh, relationship with respect to the vega of a european call option let me take a small numerical to start off uh, in terms of understanding then we can use the conceptual way of uh, trying to solve this problem so initially let me take uh, a stock uh, whose price is 40 the strike price is also 40 the risk free rate of return let's say is around uh, 6 percent the time to maturity let me take it as uh, three months and sigma the volatility let me take it at around 30 percent and probably q which is the dividend rate let me take it at around one percent just to understand the concept using the black shoals i can very well arrive at my d1 which comes out as log s by x plus r minus q plus sigma squared by 2 times t divided by sigma times square root of t so this is coming out to d1 then I can take D2 is D1 minus sigma times square root of T. So from here I am getting the price of the call using the N of D1. Okay, I am using the norms distribution function for D1. Okay, this is the N of D1. Similarly, I can compute N of D2 as well. Using the same logic, I can compute N of D2. Giving me these and based on this, I can find the price of the European call option, which is working out as the spot price times E power minus QT minus QT times nd1 minus xe power minus rt x e power minus r times t nd2 this is nd2 so this is working out as the price of the call option like this now i can even compute the vega for this call option using this simple formula s into e power minus qt into square root of t so s multiplied by e power minus qt into square root of t into 1 by uh, so uh, we'll do the divided by minus uh, divided by square root of 2 pi i can okay divided by square root of 2 pi multiplied by e power minus half d square e power minus half d d1 square so this is d1 i can get the minus half d1 square now so this is coming out to be the vega at this particular point now what we are saying is as s tends to 0 i want to see what is the vega and as s tends to infinite i want to see what is the vega so what i'll take i'll take the different values of s here right from 0 1 2 or probably uh, yeah, 0 1 2 3 4 5 i'll take for different values of s probably until a very very high value a higher values like 250 much much higher than the stock price so i'll use the data tables for that so i'll be tracking the vega in all these cases and if i am trying to use the data table to understand that scenario i can say that i am substituting all these values and what i am seeing is 
as x is tending as s is tending closer and closer to zero vega is coming very very close to zero as well you see here as s from 40 it has uh, from 40 probably it's better that i draw one curve here to understand it much more better right if i am drawing one kind of a graph to understand this relationship much better all i am seeing is this is what is being displayed by vega right a kind of a curve is what is getting displayed by the vega the peak is coming out somewhere at around 40 if you see here the peak is coming out somewhere at around 40 itself and the same logic goes even if i say the strike price if i change the strike price let's say to 50 even in that case when s is coming closer to zero uh, on the upper side s is coming closer to zero i see that the vega is becoming close to zero and even on the other side, when S is approaching a, a very large value, even then it is becoming closer to zero. But again in the middle, this time at around 49, 49.50 is the point where the Vega is much, much higher. Right, probably if I see at what point is the Vega high, you could see up to here 48, 49, 50 and from 50 it has started falling down which means I am very clearly able to observe that at the point where S is getting equated to X that is when I am seeing my Vega to be the maximum when the spot price is coming out very very closer to the strike price that is where I am seeing the Vega as maximum. You see, even if the strike price is something 60, you could see at 60, the Vega has come to the maximum and after that it is dropping. So when the stock price is coming closer to 60, you see that the Vega would be maximum, which means as, S, as Vega tends to zero, as Vega, Vega of S as s tends to zero now limit s tends to zero slightly lesser than zero i mean slightly more than zero so s e per minus q t square root of t one by square root of two pi e power minus half d1 squared now remember this d1 squared if, if d1 is going much higher right either uh, d1 could be negative d1 can be negative as well as positive if d1 is becoming much highly negative d1 squared is becoming highly positive e power minus highly positive is becoming very close to in, uh, zero e power minus infinite so if i'm saying s tending to zero this is becoming zero multiplied by all this stuff which is becoming uh, uh, close to zero on the other side if i am saying s tending to infinite and trying to use this if s is becoming closer to infinite the d1 is becoming a very large value probably in this case if i see s is becoming 250 if you see d1 is becoming a very large value when d1 becomes very very high d1 squared is much more higher so in a way it is coming out that e power minus d1 squared is becoming e power minus infinite which is again zero so that's the reason vega becomes zero even at on the higher side as well so one way we can very clearly understand that uh, limit s tends to zero vega of s is zero and even if it is tending to infinite vega is zero itself then if i am looking at spot price uh, as a function of spot price vega as a function of spot price okay so let me see do vega divided uh, i mean do vega by do s so let me take 
the, the differentiation of this to, to understand whether it is increasing or decreasing. So, because I am doing it with respect to x, all these are constants. e power minus qt square root of t by square root of 2 pi. This entire thing I will take it as constant. So, now I will do the differentiation. s times e power minus half d1 square. And uh, I have to take uh, the derivative of this d1 squared with respect to s. So, the, the derivative of this minus half d1 squared becomes minus half into 2d1. Right? It becomes minus half into 2d1. And uh, again, I am taking the derivative with respect to s. So, this is becoming, so this is becoming e power minus qt root t by 2 pi. Let me ignore this part altogether for time being. I will bring it up later. S multiplied by e power minus 0.5 d1 squared into minus d1 into the derivative of uh, d1 with respect to x becoming 1 by sigma root t and log s is becoming 1 by s. So, overall this is getting cut off. Right, 1 by sigma root t log s, all the other things are getting constant, so I will not uh, bother about them. And uh, the other part is coming out as e power minus 0.5 d1 squared, this part. So, overall it is coming out, if I am taking again, again e power minus 0.5 d1 squared out, it is becoming 1 minus of d1 by sigma root t. Now, this is what uh, is uh, coming out as this function and what I am seeing is d1. As the d1 is increasing, right now I can say e power minus half uh, d1 square. Now, if you remember the typical normal distribution function as well, we write, we have the formula in that also the, the density function e power minus half x minus mu by sigma whole square. So, the same logic if I am applying here, it is becoming e power minus half d1 square. And you see that this is maximum at x minus mu by sigma uh, equal to 0 or probably x equal to mu. At x equal to mu, this particular uh, distribution is having a maximum. Similarly, I can say at d1 equal to 0, this will have a maximum. So, if d1 is 0, yes, 1 times 1 minus 0, the value is coming out to be equal to 1. So, what we can very well see is as d1 is lesser and lesser, this is going closer towards 0. Right? Even if I say this is the first derivative, and I equate this first derivative to 0, right, to, uh, and I equate this first derivative to 0, it is coming out like 1 minus uh, d1 by sigma root t equal to 0, d1 is coming out to sigma root t. So, d1 coming out to sigma root t, so if d1 is coming out to sigma root t, uh, at a place where d1 equal to sigma root t means the whole in the numerator. If I am saying when can d1 be equal to sigma root t straight forward if log s by k, if s equal to k then d1 is becoming log s by k is becoming 0. So, it becoming sigma squared by 2 t divided by sigma root t. And yes, I have, here it is very much uh, working out. It is, this is what is becoming sigma root t.
So D1 is uh, becoming sigma root T only when I am seeing S equal to K. So at S equal to K, I would be uh, seeing that S equal to K, I would be seeing that D1 is becoming uh, equal to sigma root T. And that is the reason all I can very well uh, put it across that initially the vega is going to increase and at a later point it is going to decrease and a maximum is going to occur where S is equal to X, spot price is equal to strike price. So finding the spot price corresponding to the maximum value of vega, the spot price is equal to the strike price itself. So this is a kind of an important relationship that we need to understand in this context. All right.